In this video, we're going to look into the reactivity of Gilman reagents with respect to treating those Gilman reagents with alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds. But before we jump into what a Gilman is and how it reacts, let's remind ourselves of doing the Grignard reagent with the alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. So if we have a Grignard reagent right there, and then we would have to have a acidic workup or an aqueous workup, where is that R going to attach when we have a alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound? If we go back to our notes or the last video, we will recall that the Grignard reagent adds in an irreversible fashion. So if I say irreversible, then that should trigger in your mind, hey, that's the kinetic. That will follow the kinetic pathway, which is the direct product. So we will add that R group in a direct fashion to generate our alcohol. And if we change this reagent to a alkyl lithium reagent, we would get the same exact product. However, what's so cool and interesting is when you can take that same compound, right, like this, and treat it with a Gilman reagent. And a Gilman reagent is simply a dialkyl cuprate. So that means we have a copper metal there, and we have two R groups attached to it. And these R groups need to be the same in order for this reaction to be uh, useful. And then what do we have here? That, that copper is going to be negatively charged and that's going to be associated with the positive lithium right there. So that whole complex is the reagent. And so we can call that the lithium uh, dialkyl cuprate or easier, just the Gilman. And so we would do that in the first step, and then, like above, the second step, you're going to have a acidic workup. So we could use ammonium chloride if we would like. Okay? Add a, a weak acid there. But what's cool about this now is watch where the R group adds. Boom. It only uses one of these R's, and that's why it's so important that both these R's are the same. Because it's going to use one of the R's and attaching it to where? The beta carbon. And so that would be our thermodynamic product and our Michael addition. And I think that's so cool because the orgometallic reagents that is an orgometallic reagent, but why does this one add in a Michael addition fashion and the others, the Grignards and the alkyl lithium, add in a direct fashion? Well, it comes down to the difference in electronegativities of these metals. Okay, so if we take a look at the cuprate, so let's go lithium, cuprate, and draw my two R's right there. Okay, and let's do a Grignard, and then we will do one more, put it right here, Orgo, or uh, alkyl lithium reagents. Okay, and we've already seen that these two add direct, and this one adds in a 1,4. So that's one, two, direct, one, four, conjugate, or Michael addition. So many ways to talk about these things. Okay, so it has to do with the electronegativity difference. So what do I mean by that? Let's just say for this example, all these R's are exactly the same, okay? Some type of carbon. And so it has... 2.55 electronegativity. 
So the electronegativity for carbon is 2.55. Now, when we take a look at the lithium here, that is 0 0.98, and magnesium is 1.31, and copper is 1.90, right there. And so what's happening here? Do you see the difference between the R and the lithium? There's a, a larger gap than there is between the copper and the carbon. You see the numbers there? There's, those two numbers are closer to one another than these two. Those are further apart. And so that electronegativity difference has an effect on the reactivity. And so what's that, the consequence of this electronegativity difference is that this carbon right here is going to fill, a, not a negative, positive, I mean. It needs to be a negative. So this one's going to have a much larger partial negative. And this one's going to have a smaller partial negative. And then this R group right here is going to have the smallest all due to that difference in electronegativity. And so the alkyl lithium reagents are the most reactive because it has the larger difference. And, and then the Gilman reagent has the, is the least reactive. And the consequence of those different reactivities, one, these two are direct, Gilman is a, a Michael addition. So I think that's pretty slick. So you have to always be aware of that difference or you can get caught up 